We are back. Um, thanks for tuning back in with uh, Making Regalia with Joaquin Loan Launch. Uh, we're finishing up our segment on how to do a uh, flash stitch beading. Um, you know, I have some pieces that we got into before. Uh, how I do uh, the setup to get to my beading templates and you know my beading medias. This, you know, I want to emphasize. This flat stitch is kind of a new contemporary style of beading. It's not your traditional uh, um, uh, loom work, your gourd stitch, or uh, your lazy stitch. Um, but I find it very, you know, time efficient because I can bead really fast this way. Um, I'm not saying I'm the best beater out there, and I don't think I ever will be. It's just that this, this style of beading um, it helps me out because it's very uh, time efficient. And so what we're going to do later is uh, I'm going to show you the mechanics on how I do my beading. And we're going to go through all the step-by-steps again on how I got these steps. Um, so uh, starting with uh, from the last show, uh, I showed you how I use uh, construction paper, uh, crib felt, and heat bond to get my pieces together. Um, you know, most styles a long time ago, they would use buckskin um, or any other styles of uh, leather to actually beat upon. Now today in the power world, um, I'll not say you know this is more traditional style, but this is uh, kind of more set for Powell's. It's more towards uh, to be more durable. Um, I know like working with buckskin is very durable, uh, but sometimes uh, you know nowadays in Powell styles, it's it's not really efficient. I mean, um, me myself, you know, I've beaded. Uh, I've actually had. Uh, Old style moxins, which are you know um, accompanied with leather pieces, rawhide and whatnot, uh, around the Powell circuit. I'm actually dancing like every weekend. Uh, every weekend I'm here, you know, I'm either in Canada, or, you know, California, um, all over the nation, and my moxins take a beating. And you know, I know my grandmother who makes traditional moxins does not like you know my style of beating. Um, so. Um, but you know, I want to apologize to her, and I want to apologize to all the traditional beaters out there. It's just the style I do is just a little bit more durable for me to com uh, continue dancing every weekend and travel. So, uh, like I said, you know, get back into it. You know, uh, first, you know, I did show how we, you know, I'm I'm doing a set for my daughter as far as a legging set. Uh, I kind of showed how. I use um, copy paper, regular you know copy machine paper, to get her uh, her foot size, which I'm going to use this foot size later to. Uh, cut out a rawhide, um, and then I'll tack this down. So um, what I did is, you know, I drew her foot out, and then from there, you know, I drew this template, and this is going to be the top piece of her moccasin. You'll see, you know, I have like uh, the little lip, and uh, when you put it together and fold it around, you can kind of see in 3D how the moccasin's going to look. So pretty, pretty much this takes a little bit of time, you know, at least with copy paper, you can mess up and you're not going to be working with uh, very expensive materials as far as buckskin and stuff. You can mess up and, you know, chunk these out and, you know, throw them away. And, you know, I remember when I first tried this out, you know, I had a big pack, uh, like stack of just, you know, crumpled up paper. But, you know, after time, I finally started to figure out, like, how to uh, custom fit it. So the best part about it is use copy paper because it's very inexpensive, very cheap. And you know you can throw it away, you know, mess it up, you know, do it again. Um, but once you get this, you know, you get your template. And what I did also is I got her leg template here, uh, which I discussed the last episode. You know, this will be her legging once it rolls around. Um, it's cut at an angle, if you see, you know, like from uh, from here to there, because uh, that emphasizes, you know, like her arch and also uh, her calf muscle. So when it wraps around, it should fit perfectly. Uh, I cut out little two notches. Uh, this is to hold the legging in place so it doesn't spin around. Um, so that's kind of how I do my template for that. Now once you have your copy paper, you know, what you'll do is uh, use your crib felt um, and construction paper. So I transferred this, you know, just using this, I traced this on the construction paper, uh, cut out my construction paper, uh, then I use heat bond, and then I, uh, I um, heat bonded it to the crib felt which you can buy all these supplies at Walmart or you know Hobby Lobby or anywhere, any craft store. Uh, and then from there, you know, I just cut this out and came here. And you know, since I think I talked about this earlier last episode, um, I'm going to be making a matching set. So me and my daughter, like when this is finished, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll actually have a, a matching set. So of course, this will be yellow, and everything will correlate with my beadwork and. Everyone is going to know, you know, that's my daughter and, you know, that's her dad. So that's the cool part. It is kind of something I wanted to do for her. When you get to the crib felt, like I said, uh, this is pretty cool. 
because uh, you can always use pencil, uh, you know, just very like uh, gently draw your designs out. Um, if you mess up, you can always take the eraser and erase any line marks or any, anything you don't really feel comfortable with. Um, use the pencil first uh, before you use pen because you can kind of get the better idea how it's going to look and you can fine tune it from here to there and later on you can go in and do pin. Uh, once the pin is down, you know, that's pretty much it. I mean, either that or you can always scrap it. But, you know, like when you get to these mediums, the, these mediums aren't very expensive. Uh, this is a little bit more uh, inexpensive than, you know, your traditional like buckskin. I mean, if you ever did uh, pin on buckskin, you can, that's pretty much it. That's all she wrote. You know, that's, there's no really getting that, that pin out of there. There are ways, but, you know, sometimes you all damage the, the buckskin itself. So, you know, even if you do mess up or you don't like the way this looks, you know, you don't have to keep it. You know, you can chunk it and start over again, going through the steps that I've shown. Um, so from there, you know, I, I kind of drawn out like what I want to do uh, for her beadwork. Uh, it correlates with my beadwork. Um, you know, of course, it'll have the, uh, the yellow in the background and the blue border, uh, plus the designs that will match mine. Uh, the warriors, you know, uh, what I like to do is uh, every warrior is going to be a different color. And, and my, my beadwork, uh, I've used all different kinds as far as reds, blues. And my daughter, of course, I ask her what color she wants her warriors, and she wants them pink. I, I guess, you know, I guess I'm going to do a pink uh, warrior. I've never really done a pink warrior, but, you know, what my daughter wants, my daughter gets. So, so from there on, you know, I'm going to do, uh, do pink warrior. And, but here, I'm going to show you the mechanics and how I do my flat stitch. So when we've started, you know, I've laced up my needle. Um, pretty simple, you know, it's just your average, uh, this is 11 size needle uh, with my thread. You know, you always tie a knot. I, I tie a couple of them on the very end just to make sure it's secure. Um, get it all ready. Um, sometimes what I like to do is uh, I'll, I'll lace up a couple of needles. That way, as soon as I run out of one, you know, I've got another one ready to go. So I don't, there's no latency in time when I actually do my work. Um, the, the mechanics on this is very simple. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to come up from the bottom of the, um, your um, material and you're going to come up until all the way to the knot hits the very end of it. Um, then you're going to load your beads. Uh, this style is different and it kind of takes a little bit of understanding how it works. Uh, what I'll do is I'll load my beads and what I could do is go all the way, I'm going to start at this very corner edge and I'm going to go all the way down. Um, I'm going to load this bead and I'll probably go halfway with it with my color sequence. And I'm just going to load the beads all the way down this line and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack it down into the material. Uh, once I do that, uh, traditionally, I've always known to come back up and go through the bead every so often to tack it down. But, you know, if, if, you, if you're not fluent with this style, it can cause gaps and it can cause ridges and it can cause the bead line to actually bump up. Um, this style, this flat stitch, is different. Instead of actually going through the bead, what you're going to do is come up through the material and um, go over the line of beads. Instead of going through it, you'll just go over the line, which is very different. Um, mechanically, when I, when I first saw this, I was like, well, I, I never thought of this. And it, the function of it works very well. Um, the beads actually stay perfectly flat. Um, and the cool part is if you're doing something very detailed, uh, another way to do it is um, the spacing of the beads. If you're working on a very, very detailed project, um, you want it perfectly, perfectly flat, um, you'll, actually, you'll do um, every two beads. Me, uh, I'll do every four to every three. Um, this set that you see here, which is uh, my outfit, this one took a little bit more time because this is a lot of beadwork. And of course, this is an entire set. So this is one top apron, one bottom apron, one cu uh, two cuffs, uh, full bead of moccasins. And uh, I had this done within six months with help with, from other friends out there. Um, so the spacing on it, I think we went every five beads. Uh, but if you see, you know, it still came out uh, generally perfectly flat. Um, here on this one, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of time and probably do maybe or every four beads. That way it, it continuously be uh, perfectly flat. Now, if I was doing a crown, I might do every two because that's going to be my crowning achievement. So go right into it and get into the mechanics of it. I'm going to show, I'm going to start right at the very tip of this corner and pierce just like so and make sure the knot is all the way down you know if you look on the back you know it's it's in there and, you know it's kind of like your stopping point and you know this gives it a little bit of stability 
So from there, I'm just going to load up my beads. Um, this one, you know, I'm going to do this black and white line that I'm going to go all the way around. It kind of, uh, this black and white line, kind of more traditional style beading um, design. Uh, but it, what other colors that you have in it, it brings out your, your colors and makes it a little bit pop. It's kind of a, I would say a little bit of a buffer of a color. So I'm just going to load my needle, go every five, five black, five white. If I can get it on there. All right, I got three. Come on. And you'll notice, you know, some beaters, they'll, they'll use dishes, uh, some bead right straight off the line. Um, sometimes I prefer doing it right off the line. It just seems faster. Um, if it, my mom and, you know, my, my mom's always like, she always puts all her beads in like a, a saucer. And she likes to fish them out this way, which is cool. Me, I find it a little time consuming. I, I just like to bead off the line. But I had some of these beads left over, so... Uh, I guess I'm just going to use this, which is a funny story because uh, I remember my mom, she'd always be, she is an Abbott loom worker and she does a lot of loom work and has like three years. And one time uh, one of my uh, brothers was like really little and she was babysitting him and she kind of uh, broke into her room and was playing around with all her stuff. And sometimes she, my mom likes to correlate her beads in certain little patches on, on her dish. And my little brother went in there with his pinky and swirled them all around. My mom was super mad. <laughs> but I, you know, I didn't take the blame for that. I didn't do it. So let's see. So as you see, you know, I'm just loading this needle up, loading down the line every five, you know, and then switching colors back and forth. So the dish sees out. And like I said, you know, I'm just gonna go continually down this line. What I want to emphasize is when you're beating this style, you know, always don't skimp on stuff because you never know. This stuff might be lasting for somebody else, like behind you. Um, I know I've had beadwork that I passed down, you know, one of my cousins or, you know, just in general, just anybody, you know, that, you know, wants to dance or, you know, give them a chance, you know, that, that way, you know, it will continue on. Okay, I'm going to stop uh, here in a minute. So, you know, five more. If I can get it in there. I am a faster beater. I guess it's just me being on camera that I don't know, it's taking a little bit of time to fish these out. You, got, you guys out there in Hollywood are getting me nervous. Okay, is that five? Yeah, it's five. Okay. So what we do is we've got our line of beads. And what we're going to do is, like I said, I'm just going to tack this down through the material. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up every four, and instead of going through the bead, I'm actually going to go over the line of beads. And this will make everything perfectly flat. Now, when you do this style, uh, what you want to do is give yourself a little bit of leeway. Don't, don't tack it. Don't push these beads all the way down and tack it right there. Because uh, what's going to happen is once you go over the line, it's going to start to push these beads back. So you want to give yourself a little bit of space. If not, you're going to have to come out with some needle nose and um, at the very end of here, when you get down this line, you might have to bust a couple of beads, which is very, it's kind of hard to do and you really got to be careful when you do it. I've done it and I've actually cut my line before and then you'll have to come back through the, like, the beads itself to hold it down. Like I said, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of space, a little bit of space to play with. So I'll come down. And if you see, it's in there. It's right in there. Okay, so I gave myself a little bit of space, and if you can see, I can move the beads back and forth. And, you know, it's not super tight. Uh, you don't want to get super tight, because like I said, you'll probably have to bust like uh, one of these beads back here. And with dealing with a uh, color sequence like this, it might throw your beads off going around the circle. So coming around, I'm going to go every four. So what I'm going to do is just come up on the side of the bead line, just like so. Come up the side, pull this tight. You'll see it, you know, come on the back. It's tight on the back. And from there, we're just going to go over the line, not through the bead, but over the line, and pierce it back down. Pulling through, and bam, we got it. So now, see, these beads are pretty well tacked down. And then what we'll do is we'll skip up to the next four, come up. Let me 
Let's see. And going down. Just like so. And if you see on the back, you know, it's just going to go all the way through here. So when you get finished here, you're going to have a lot of tack marks. But, you know, on the front part, you know, this is going to be all perfectly flat. This allows you, this style of, you know, like uh, beadwork, you know, you'll see I have a lot of just straight end designs. Uh, doing this flat stitch, you know, you're going to fly through this. Um, and this also helps when you do real detailed work because you can tack it down and go around and around edges and, you know, it, it, you know if, you, if you need to just cut it here, cut it there, you can uh, go through maybe two beads to three beads and make it real accurate. So that's why I like to do this flat stitch. Let's see. Going through. And tacking it down. And you know, like through the power like uh, video, um, probably the next episode you'll see these will be done. And it's going to seem like it took me no time at all, but I imagine I'll probably spend like nights and nights doing this. But and it seemed like only a couple seconds I'll have a pair of leggings done. You know, once you actually obtain this style uh, and you get your get comfortable, with it, there are a lot of people always looking for uh, other people to bead for them. And not for say, but you know, you can make a lot of money being a beater. Ta da! We are tack this whole line down. And sometimes it does, uh, you have to fight it to get it in there, just like so. Okay. So there, we got this whole beaded line down. And you see, I mean, it doesn't really bump up. There's not really, you know, there, there's no gap and it doesn't arch up like you do on some styles of beadwork. This is perfectly flat and that's kind of how I want it. Um, the cool part next, you know, like uh, right here, uh, I'm actually going to do a multicolor like uh, around there. And then I'll just do my fill-in work of all my yellow. Um, this style of beadwork, you know, is like once I do one color, uh, you can really, really fly through it. It's just the changing out of the colors is a little bit more time consuming. But, you know, that's, this is why I kind of like this style because, you know, you can fly through most, style, uh, most, um, most different colors. So continue on, I'm just going to go and do the same thing around. I'm going to do this whole thing black and white. Um, then from there, the, kind of do a multi-rainbow color and then just do the fill-in work and do this real detailed design here. Uh, I kind of want to show you how I'm going to do my fill-in work. Um, you see, I, I started a line going down like on this one design, and I'm going to show you how I do the fill-in work and how the style um, helps it out a little bit as far as going through to do the fill-in work. If you see, you know, I got a pretty good angle here, here between this design. I'm going to fill this all in blue, so this border is all going to be blue, like outside these colors. Um, so what I'm going to do is to fill this in. You know, I'm going to uh, start beating, and my lines are going to go this way all the way down. So you have your straight ends this way and I'm, that'll be the directions of my bead line. So at the very corner, right, right in the corner, I'm going to just add one bead and then from there I'm going to add maybe, uh, depending on how it feels, maybe like uh, two beads to three beads to kind of start building it up and then from there maybe five beads, uh, just generally to start to fill it in. And, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, as far as number-wise, like one bead, you don't have to do anything, you know, you just have to do it once. And, let's see, kind of lay it flat, kind of get a good feel for it. But, you'll see, you know, like, uh, how I fill this in and how I get my lines all perfect. So, there's one bead. I just want to get close to it. And pull this up, and you can fish around. You know, just try two beads and just kind of see how it looks. And if you need more, you can add like another bead. And we're gonna position it right next to it, and it looks like two beads is gonna be perfect for it. So I'm just gonna go through and tack this down. And you see, my lines are hopefully straight. <laughs> said hopefully. Um, you know, just kind of take some time, you know, and if you don't feel right, if, if it doesn't look right to, always, you know, don't over uh, skimp on it. You know, you can always pull your lines up, uh, your actual, your bead thread up and pull these beads out. 
if it doesn't look uh, fluent to you. Because, you know, th this reflects on you and as far as your technique and, you know, how much time you want to put into it. And I, I don't like to rush beadwork or something because, you know, you really want to take some time to make things look good. And, you know, if you got a project and I've always been that way, you know, it's always trying to fight, like trying to stay up at night, trying to knock something out. And I hate doing it because sometimes you lose your design work as far as time. Uh, time. And, you know, you want to take time out to do a really good job. So if you're going to start a project, at least kind of space out where, um, you know, you have enough time to finish it. I know it's always, you know, the beginning of the Palo Alto season, people hit me up and, uh, oh, JR, I need this, JR, I need that. And sometimes I, I just, I, I have to tell them no. And it's just like, I hate doing that, but, you know, I, I rather, I rather not skimp on my, on my design work. And see, if you see, you know, I just went one, one bead, the two bead, the three bead. Now I'm going four. I'm probably just going to go up and over that, that, um, in the, on that four line, just to hold everything down and make everything look flat. So go up and over, and that's all you really gotta do with this mechanics of this style of beadwork. And everything should hopefully come out perfectly flat. Out there someday, you know, there's always gonna be someone else that wants to dance and participate. And you never know, you know, the outfit that you had a long time ago, you think, oh, you know, this is, you know, like this is all my old stuff. And, you know, to somebody else, that's going to be like Christmas just to, you know, get that opportunity to come out there and dance. So, so like I said, all I'm doing is just kind of laying this down, kind of looking at it, making sure it's kind of where the set where I want it to. And just adding a bead and or taking one away when needed. And I think we're up to six beads, so I'll come up right in the middle of them between like uh, between three, and just go over the line. That way, you know they'll they'll just stay tacked down perfectly. Now I know a lot of people like out there, you know they're. They'll, they'll stick to, you know, using cotton or nylon, and that's cool, you know, it's just I like the, 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 this nylon thread. Um, I don't really pr care for too much for beeswax, you know, my mom used to use it a long time ago, and I, I know it's to keep this, this line together and functional, but I find that, you know, just beating, you know, straight up with this vinyl, I mean, I mean this nylon uh, thread, it doesn't really seem to gunk up too much. Now, the cotton threads, you know, you'll, you'll have to untangle them sometimes. But that's all you use, like, you know, pretty much beeswax to do is to keep it from untangling uh, up. So, but, you know, once you start beading, you'll find that once you get your technique down, it is very therapeutic. I mean, there's times that, you know, I just sit there and, you know, I'll even sit there and watch TV and just bead away. And bam. Okay. Now, if you can kind of see right here, you know, what we have is uh, we have like one bead, two bead, three bead, you know, all the way up. And the way I said, you know, like I do, is what I'll do is I'll just tack it onto the line and come down and just add a bead here and there when I need it. Um, that kind of gives it the dimension of, you know, the triangle space that we're working with. Um, here and there, you know, you can just add one, take one away. Here in a little bit, you know, I'll be coming up through over the line, tack it down maybe two times because I think we'll be um, next one up with like four. Um, we're going to continue on beating and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, like the t this technique will help you out in whatever endeavors that you're going to be looking at. And, you know, if you missed an episode or you want to like rewind or you want to see something uh, that I've done before, I uh, can always uh, tune into CATV47.com. Uh, uh, that's where all the shows are hosted. Um, that's where all the episodes are. And you can rewind and watch them over again. And, you know, in case if you missed something. 
Uh, next episode, I think we're going to get into, uh, I'm going to do a little girl's jingle dress. Um, kind of to do some ribbon work. I'm going to show you a really cool trick on how to do that. Um, and then, you know, uh, I'll show the progression on how uh, this beadwork's coming along. Um, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, this technique will help you out and, you know, hopefully it'll make you guys famous as far as beadworkers. And, you know, uh, just remember, like, uh, kind of mention me when you actually become famous. But thanks again for tuning in. Uh, this is JR um, Lone Lodge with Making Regalia. I hope.